What I want to do in this video is familiarize ourselves with one of the most important molecules in biology, and that is glucose, sometimes referred to as dextrose. And the term dextrose comes from the fact that the form of glucose typically, for, typically found in nature, if you form a solution of it, it's going to polarize light to the right. And dexter means right. But the more typical term, glucose, this literally means sweet in Greek. If you ask a Greek friend to say sweet, it sounds like glucos, or I'm, I'm not saying it perfectly, but it sounds a lot like glucose, and that's because that's where the word comes from. And it is super important because it is, it is, it is how energy is stored and transferred in biological systems. In fact, right now, when, if someone were to talk about your blood, your blood sugar, they're talking about the glucose content. So when people talk about blood, blood sugar they're talking about your they're talking about your glucose content the whole process of photosynthesis this is all about plants using harnessing the sun's energy and storing that energy in the form of glucose when we talk about when we talk about things like respiration in our in our cells cellular respiration that's all about taking glucose and using it to fo and to 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 create atps which are the molecular currency of energy inside of our body so these are incre this is an incredibly important molecule we can start making chains of glucose to form glycogen to form starches this along with another similar another simple sugar fructose you can use to form our table sugar but even glucose by itself is sweet so let's get familiar with it as a molecule. So immediately, when you look at this, is it kind of drawn as a as an open chain? We see that we have one, two, three. Actually, let me number these. We have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So chemical formula would be C sub six, a subscript of six. We have how many hydrogens? How many hydrogens do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 hydrogens. C6, H12, and then we have, how many oxygens do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six oxygens. Six oxygens. So you might notice we have six carbons, and then the ratio of for every one oxygen, we have two hydrogens, which is really the ratio of hydrogens to oxygens in water. And if we want to really, if we really want to, if we, and obviously here we don't have just two hydrogens and one oxygen, we have 12 hydrogens and six oxygens. But it's really good to even just familiarize yourselves with what are the different parts here. So we see on the number one carbon, it is part of a carbonyl group. When a carbon is bonded, to double bonded to an oxygen like that, that's a carbonyl. Carbonyl. Carbonyl group. And in fact, because this carbon, it's double bonded to an oxygen, but then its other bonds are to, uh, I guess you could say, a, a, a carbon chain right over here. And then, but its other bond right here is a hydrogen. We would call this an aldehyde. We would call this an aldehyde group. And it makes aldehyde. And it would officially make the entire molecule an aldehyde. If you contain an aldehyde group, you are an aldehyde. So glucose, and when, it's written, when it's drawn as a straight chain or when it's in a straight chain form, it would be considered an aldehyde. And then of course it has all these hydroxyl groups on them. And these hydroxyl groups, these OH groups over here, that would officially make glucose also, it would officially make it an alcohol. And it's neat to, to keep in mind how the structure is. So you have six carbons. One of them is part of this aldehyde group. It's, it's part of this carbonyl right over here. And then the other five are each bonded to a hydroxyl. And when I've oriented it this way, um, four of the hydroxyls are on the right-hand side, and the one on the three carbon is on the left-hand side. And all of the other carbon bonds are with hydrogen. Carbon likes to form four covalent bonds. Every, every one of these six carbons has formed four covalent bonds. And so you would fill up all the rest once you've accounted for this carbonyl here and you've accounted for all of these hydroxyls. Everything else is going to be a hydrogen. Now, this is when you've drawn when you've drawn glucose just as a straight chain, but many times you will see it in its cyclical form. It's it's neat to kind of think about how do you go from this form to this form over here. And so what I've drawn here is this exact same this exact open chain, but I've started to I've started to bend it a little bit. And just to be able to keep track of things, let's renumber the carbons. So this is the carbon that's part of the carbonyl group. So it's carbon 1 and then we number up from there 2 3, 4, 5, 
And then that is the number six carbon. The reason why I've made these, this bond over here nice and fat is to show that it's, it's kind of closer to us. It's popping out of the page. And as we go from the, the second carbon to the first carbon, we're going back into the page. When we go from the third carbon to the fourth carbon, we are going, we are going back into the page right over here. So this big fat bond, this is between carbon three and carbon two. That's this. That's this right over here. And this going from two to one, that's this bond. I'll draw it a little bit kind of going in. And then this bond is this bond right over here. And so take a second, pause the video if you need, but try to orient yourself. To orient yourself, imagine we're going to take this to the right like this to, to bring it over here. And then we're going to rotate, we're going to rotate this end and bend it up backwards like that to get to this form. C6 is now bent all the way up, is, is now rotated all the way up there. We've bent, we've bent this chain. And the whole reason is, is because this will typically react the hydroxyl group. This is, a, this is the, the, the most typical form of glucose you will see when you see it in a cyclical form. There's actually other forms that you can have. But the, the oxygen that forms the hydroxyl group on the fifth carbon, it can, it can attack it can attack the, the, the number one carbon that forms this carbonyl group. And that's because oxygen, we've talked a lot about, it is very electronegative, likes to hog electrons. So this carbon is partially positive. And so you could take one of the lone pairs. You could take one of, so this oxygen right over here is going to have two lone pairs. Let me just draw them as neatly as I can. That's one lone pair. And then this is another lone pair right over here. So this oxygen can, form a bond with this carbon. When we learn organic chemistry in more depth, we'd call that a nucleophilic attack. It sounds very fancy. But it's just the fact that these are drawn to each other. This has a partially positive charge. This guy has a, 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 a lone pairs of electrons that can be used to form bonds with things. And so when, that, when those electrons form this bond, or, or bond to this carbon, that's going to be this bond, this bond right over here. And then this carbon can let go this carbon can let go of the electrons in one of these, let me do this in a more obvious color, in, in the double bond right over here. It can let go of one of the bonds, the electrons in one of the bonds, and then that can be taken back by the oxygen. Or even better, that can be used by that oxygen to capture a hydrogen proton in the solution. It actually is probably part of a hydronium molecule, but let me just draw it this way. This would just be used to capture a hydrogen proton. That would just be a hydrogen, uh, a hydrogen atom without its electron. It's just a hydrogen ion. It would just be a hydrogen proton, and that would form this bond. That would form this bond right over here. And let me let me just be very clear. This carbon, this carbon right over here, is this carbon right over there. This oxygen, this oxygen, is this oxygen, is that oxygen right over there. And so hopefully you see how it forms a cycle. And you're probably saying, oh, wait, wait, aren't, don't we have a little hydrogen attached here? Isn't you know, the way I've drawn it, it looks like there's an extra hydrogen over here. And then that would leave this guy with a positive charge. We leave it with a positive charge. But you can imagine we're in a solution of water that, hey, I have, some, I have another water molecule right over here. And you know, these things are all bouncing around and interacting in different ways. But it could use, let me do that in the right color, it could use so that's oxygen. It could use one of its lone pairs. Instead of this, you know, this will become positive temporarily, but then it can use it can do it can use one of its lone pairs to grab just the hydrogen proton, which would allow which will allow this character to take its to take its electrons, to take these electrons back and turn into this character and just be neutral. And then this this guy would have gained, so we have a, a proton going into the solution. You have hydronium, but we took a proton from the solution. We took a proton, we gave a proton to the solution. And so you could end up with this. So the whole reason I did this is just so when you see it in biology class or chemistry class, you're not intimidated by it. In fact, this is something that's really valuable to get very, very familiar with, because you're going to see glucose and other sugars in many, many, many different molecules throughout your academic career.